Hi, my name is David, and I want to welcome you to a quick math video in our statistics series. These short videos are meant to guide you through a mathematical operation that has been covered in one of your cozy online classes. These videos use step-by-step -step and easy-to-understand instructions so that you can get the right answer the first time. In this video we will be looking at the weighted mean. We will first begin by looking at the weighted mean and how it differs from the statistical mean. We will then look at the formula to calculate the weighted mean and finish the video with some practice exercises. Thinking back to our video about statistical mean, which you can access by clicking the link above, we know that the mean is the average of all of the data points in a data set. It is easy to calculate the statistical mean because we are using data points that are considered equally important or have an equal amount or frequency. The weighted mean is also a type of average, but it assigns different weights to each value in the data set because some data may be more important or more frequent than other data. We can see that the formula for calculating the weighted mean looks a little complicated, but trust me, it is not as mean as it looks. Let's break down what information the formula is looking for. The uppercase W is what we are trying to find, the weighted mean. The lowercase W is the weights that are applied to each data point in the data set. The letter X represents data points in the data set, and the letter N represents how many data points are in the data set. The Greek letter sigma is telling us we need to sum our values together. Let's rewrite this formula using more practical terms. If we reflect back on how to calculate the statistical mean, we simply combined all of the data points and then divided by the total number of data points in the data set. To calculate the weighted mean, we need to take one extra step. We first multiply each data point by its given weight. Once we have completed those calculations, we then proceed as if we were calculating the statistical mean. Let's put this concept to practical use in an exercise. Our first exercise is called, Did I Pass? In this exercise, one of your classmates is enrolled in another cozy class. They had a midterm exam, a course project, and a final exam. The grades for both exams and the course project can be seen in the table below. Since each grade is weighted differently, your classmate is having a hard time determining what their final mark will be in the class. Use the weighted mean formula to determine their final mark in the class. Let's start putting numbers into our formula. The first step we will take is to enter the information we have. Since we are determining the weighted mean of academic values, we will use 100 as our end value because a perfect score in the course would be 100%. We now take the grade from each assignment and multiply it by the weight of the assignment. We add those values together which gives us a value of 7800. We divide 7800 by the perfect score for the class and get a final value of 78. This is our final mark for the class. We know that we use 100 when calculating weighted means for academic grades. But what do we do when we are calculating the weighted mean for other samples? Let's find out in the next exercise. Our second practice exercise is called Soda Stats. The Sunset Sarsaparilla Corporation wants to consolidate production at two of their factories that produce soda. Their soda requires a blend of orange juice and mango juice. At their Toronto factory, they use a 100 cubic meter mixing vat which contains a ratio of 60% orange juice and 40% mango juice. At their Atlanta factory, they use a 200 cubic meter mixing vat which contains a ratio of 40% orange juice and 60% mango juice. These values can be seen in the table below. We have been asked to calculate the weighted mean for each type of juice being used. We first need to decide whether we are going to calculate the value for the orange juice or the mango juice. Let's start with the orange juice. We know that Toronto uses 60% orange juice in their soda and Atlanta uses 40% orange juice in their soda. These values will be multiplied by their respective mixing vat sizes. However, we need to figure out what value to use for N. We know that N is the total number of dataset values and since we have two different tank sizes, we need to add those numbers together. Once we insert all of the numbers into the formula, 
we can simply multiply the orange concentrations with the mixing vat sizes and add the two mixing vat sizes together. Once we have done this, we will divide the combined amount of orange juice into the combined vat size to get a value of 46.67. This is the weighted mean of orange juice in both mixing tanks. We now will calculate the weighted mean of mango juice in both mixing vats. We know that the factory in Toronto uses a 40% mango juice ratio, while the factory in Atlanta uses a 60% mango juice ratio. We will first multiply the juice ratios together and combine the vat sizes. We divide the two numbers together to get a weighted mean of 53.33 for the mango juice concentration. We can check our math by added the weighted mean of the orange juice and the weighted mean of the mango juice together which equals 100%. In today's episode we learned how to calculate the weighted mean. Some important things to remember about weighted means are. The weighted mean is used when data points do not have the same weight or frequency. When using weighted mean for calculating academics, we assume the n value is 100. When calculating other n values, we need to combine our datasets together before making the calculation. We hope that you found this short quick math video helpful for your studies. Remember all quick math videos, as well as other tutorials, can be found under the resource tab in your learning software. If you require further assistance, please reach out to your course instructor. If you found this video on social media, please remember to like and follow our page as we are always adding new content to help you advance your skills. Until next time, happy learning!